Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? So, welcome back to Gold Rush. This week, I am hoping that we can get all of this finished out. Now, I don't know how many episodes of this week it's going to take for us to do this. Um, I'd like to get that end a little bit lower down than what we've got at the moment so that we can sort of take this middle section out. Now, we have sort of come to the edge of the claim right here, though, and this is the bit that I'm sort of thinking is going to seriously affect how we do this. We might have to bring the cutting back this way a little bit. Now, we've been using the bulldozer just on its own to, like, push things out. And I'm thinking that we'll get the excavator over here. And I don't know if we'll move the material away. We might actually do that. I think we, what we might do is we'll get the excavator over here. And we can just start digging this area right here so that we can see where the wall of the claim is going to come down. And we can load it into the um, dumper here. And then we can take that one up over and tip it into the wash plant so that we're at least doing something with the wash plant. So our first task is to get the excavator over there and lined up so that we can start using that. We'll leave the bulldozer where it is for the moment and then we can come back to that one a bit later. And then once we've done all that, we'll bring the excavator back over here and wedge it back into this tight corner over here. Last week, in the last episode that I did, I talked a lot about completely non-game related stuff about um some of my um some of my views on life and you know different things that i do and um well just how how i like to sort of live my life and um the mottos that i live by and so on a lot of now i, I did seriously consider not doing that episode i did um actually whoa, whoa 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 wrong way wrong way wrong way um okay that's that's great you've got to remember we're going backwards here right so yeah i did seriously consider not doing that episode because i thought well it's absolutely not gamer related in any way shape or form but i've had such a huge positive feedback from that and i'm Apparently, I have made a big significant difference to quite a lot of people. You really did identify with what I was saying, um, and you really, really appreciate it. And I've absolutely loved reading all of your messages about that. It has just been absolutely fantastic. Um, I've, obviously, I'm not going to be doing an episode like that all the time, but I may occasionally do another one here and there. Um, but it's just been... It's, been absolutely amazing reading everybody's stories and all the different things that you do um different people's mottos and how they like to live their lives and just also hearing that i've actually made a significant difference to a number of people about um how you do things and even if it's just sort of identifying that you know you're not alone in going through some rough times we've all yeah, everybody goes through rough times at one point or another. I have been through some very, very rough times. And so, yeah, for those of you who have, just know that you're not alone. Um, and it's just absolutely fantastic reading all of that feedback. It was just brilliant. Anyway, today we're all about the game. And if we can just bring this thing slowly but surely up over here. Um, I had some issues when I started recording with um my microphone it's it's um like pick it is uh being fuzzy or something i'm not quite sure what it was doing uh, i did this once before and i ended up having to send my headset back to germany to have it uh, repaired they did it under warranty because something had gone wrong with it i really really hope that this isn't the case again because i had to go like two weeks without my headset and i had to use a really really cheap awful alternative for quite a long time and i really really don't want to have to do that again um i would prefer to uh, I thought I'd stopped it for a minute. I would prefer to not have to deal with all that, but um, if it if it does, it does. So I apologise if the episode does sound a little bit funny. I don't think it does. I have the audio recording. I can see um, sort of what the audio looks like as I'm recording it. Um, I use Audacity or Audacity to um, do my recording of my audio and I have that on one of my other monitors so it's visible all the time so I can see when it's like picking up a load of fuzz or when the voice my voice is really quiet I can see all of this all the time as I'm recording so it doesn't it's not showing anything unusual at the moment whereas it did at the start of the episode and it's because of that that um, I started using uh, Order City because of the fact that I can watch the um, the input to it hang on I want to go there and there 
Start that one up. Let's turn some lights on on this thing. There we go. Now we can see what we're doing. Um, yeah, it's because of that option for being able to uh, put the audio, well, be, being able to like view the audio as it's being recorded, because I had this issue with the whole fuzzy recording some time ago, um, I think it was back in, during FS15, it was one of my FS15 videos, and it came out absolutely awful, I didn't notice until after I'd recorded, and it was too late by that point, I had to get the video uploaded or just not do a video at all, so I ended up uploading it, um, and I wasn't pleased about it, so that's why I went and got this, and it works really well, so I was able to pick up on it. But if anything does develop later on, if we get, I'm going to try and sort of listen to it as well as I can while I'm doing my editing. Um, but I still may miss something. So if anything sounds out of place, please let me know in the comment section because then I can do something about it. Um, if I don't know, I can't listen to absolutely everything as I do my editing. I try to listen to as much as I can, but I literally don't have time to go over the whole thing. Um, and listen to every single word because of the sheer number of recordings that I do. Um, some people do are able to do it, um, do a slightly different style of video to what I do. I always viewed my videos as halfway between um, some people's YouTube videos, you know, the highly edited ones, and streaming. I sort of I, I feel like I'm halfway between the two. Um, I don't know about his more recent content, but Zach Scott. Um, he's quite a big YouTuber, you may well have heard of him, and millions and millions of subscribers. I don't know exactly how many he's got, but he does have a lot of subscribers. Now, Zach Scott, he used to do uh, just exactly like that with um, his old uh, Plants vs. Zombies material that he used to do. Um, he used to do like an hour, hour and a half long video, and it would literally be like a cross between streaming and um, a highly edited YouTube video. Um, my kids have watched Zach Scott quite a lot, especially these older ones, and I sort of thought, well, that seems to work. That's that's a, It seems to be a good way of doing it, because I can still edit the bits that I want to edit, but at the same time, it's kind of like a stream where, I, where you you know, you get, you get a, a, a lot of gameplay going into it, um, but it's not like a, a highlights reel. Is it, does that kind of make sense? So that's kind of what I approach. That's, that's my um, general approach to most of my videos is I don't want to do a highlights reel, but at the same time, I don't want to do full streaming. I'd like to remove the the most dull parts of um, the videos and keep the majority of it in there. So that's, that's what I try to do. Whether this actually works very well or not is really down to you, the viewer, to decide. Um, I'm hoping that it works. But like I say, yeah, it's definitely down to you guys to make the final decision on whether you think that this is a successful recipe or not. I'm assuming that some of you think so because it's the style that I've been trying to do for quite a while now. And I'm getting more and more people subscribed to this channel, which absolutely, I think is just amazing. It, I, it never ceases to amaze me, the number of people that are subscribing to me. Um, every day I get hundreds more people say, we really like your content and we want to hear more of it. And... It's just, it staggers me. It really does. It's absolutely fantastic. It's genuinely amazing. So I really hope that you continue to like it. I'm looking at upcoming sim games. Now, I know that I'm trying to do, I do do a few other games on the channel, but I know they're not very popular. This this particular crowd is not into um, other types of games. You're mostly into uh, simulator gaming. And that's fine because that's mostly what we do here. Um, so, like, so, World of Warcraft, I do do a World of Warcraft series, and that is probably the least popular series on the channel. However, that's the one series that I am going to keep doing, even though it's highly unpopular. Um, I get, like, five, six hundred views in a week for that one, which is, it's really low. If anything else was that bad, I wouldn't do it. Um, Factorio is a little bit better. I get anywhere from 700 to 1,000 views on that in a week, which, it's, I mean, it's not great considering the time that I put into the video. However, it's still, um, it's, it's a slightly different brand of gameplay. So if you've never seen Factorio, I would encourage you to go and watch one of my videos at least and just sort of take a look because the game itself is just exquisite. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a... Um, you you kind of you basically you start out with a factory you you start out with well you start out with not very much and you build a factory you've got a smelter and a way to extract some ore from some of the patches on the ground um, it's not very efficient and you build up from there and eventually you build a rocket that you can escape the planet with 
um, all the while fighting off the angry natives, which are giant bugs. Now, I mean, I don't actually have the angry natives active on my playthrough. I've got it on peaceful mode so that I don't have them constantly attacking my base. And I'm building a massive, giant, sprawling, beltless factory where everything is carried to and fro by automated robots. It's absolutely awesome. I genuinely love playing that game. It's so much fun. You know what? I'm going to start the plant. No, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to put this first load in and we'll just leave it. And then we'll come back and we'll start the plant up for the second load. That might be a better way to do it. I think. I think that's a better way to do it. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. We'll soon see if this pays off. Um, it's because I didn't really want to waste too much fuel while I'm um, getting the next load. And I also, I do want to... Um, move some of the material into that hole in the ground. Now it has been suggested to me by a few people that I should take the tailings there and dump those into the hole in the ground and I think that's actually a really good idea so we will move over there and we'll try and do that with the tailings at some point. I'm not going to do it just yet, I'm going to carry on with my little project that I'm doing right here. We're going to continue digging along the way here with the excavator just for a little bit further so that we can um, Ooh, stop. There we go. There's plenty far enough. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue on a little bit further here. Um, it's, and also just to like dig this down a little bit. And then we can get the bulldozer in there again and we can level it all off uh, afterwards. And then I'm hoping that we'll have like a really cool deep cutting that we can start working from. Um, so yeah, games that I play on this channel. Um, Factorio is... I love Factorio. It's so easy to spend days playing that game. It really is. It can sort of pull you in and it's it's just absolutely incredible. I love playing that game. I really do. Um, and there's so much complexity available. You you literally... It's quite simple to start out with. You It is fairly basic and simple. Um, you follow some simple processes. The game is really, really well made and balanced. The developers are very, very active. Um, the game is better than most polished, finished games. What happened there? I didn't turn my lights off. Uh, okay. <laughs> someone switched. Someone, someone switched the sun off temporarily. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. They switched the sun off. Um, okay, now that we've got the sun back on again. Um, yeah, it's. The, the game is really, really well balanced, it's well polished, even the tiniest bugs um, get attention very, very quickly, and it's still in early access, it's not even the official full released version yet, because the devs aren't happy that it is exactly fully 100%. It's because of where I'm putting that bucket, isn't it? it, it it's, that's why I keep switching the sunlight off. Seriously. It's nine o'clock in the morning. You can have some sunlight now. I don't know what's going on with this. Um, so I would strongly recommend you at least try Factorio or look at a few videos of it. Um, it's it's absolutely incredible. I love that game. I really. It's it's because of it's because of where I'm digging. It's got to be. It's definitely got to be because of where I'm digging. Let's try turning my lights on at least. Um, things do seem to be moving around here a little bit. I reckon. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's causing this. I thought that there was a recent update to the game that had kind of um, cured some of these issues rather than sent a few, started a few more. Oh, well, we'll keep going. Um, what else am I playing at the moment? I am also doing Stardew Valley, as many of you know. That's going to be three days a week, and it's not as popular as what this one has been, but there are quite a few people that do seem to be really liking it. I'm, I'm running a longer episode on that one than I normally do on most of my Let's Plays. Um, at the moment, I'm doing around 50 minutes for an episode on that one. Um, I will... I'm going to ask, I'm going to do it again this week, but I am also going to ask the audience, those of you who are enjoying watching that playthrough, I will be asking you this week um, if you want that to continue like that, or would you prefer me to go to a slightly shorter format, um, but we'll, we'll talk about that in Stardew rather than on here. Um, and then I'm also doing Oxygen Not Included, quite a lot of people have asked me to play Oxygen Not Included, and... Uh, it's it's different. It's very, very different. It's got a very, very steep learning curve. I will tell you that much. It's very steep learning curve to play that game. Um, but it does seem to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm enjoying doing that. I'm enjoying naming my duplicates and 
setting them all of their different tasks. You basically you got to mine your way through an asteroid, and it's actually really really cool. It's it's great fun. I'm I'm I am really enjoying that game. So we'll see how that one goes. I don't know how long that one will last on the channel. It does depend on its popularity. Um, as with most of the games, I do Mud Runner on a Sunday. Uh, what else am I doing at the moment? Um, just trying to think. Oh, Car Mechanic Simulator is Tuesday, so that you will already have seen today. Um, that one, for those of you who haven't seen it, basically you just work in a garage and you repair cars. It's literally that. Um, it's done quite well. It's very well balanced. There were some issues when the game was first released, but those have all been patched by a very dedicated development team. Um, and the game is now polished and released and it's a lot of fun it really is a lot of fun playing that game i really am enjoying it um i've just unlocked a, a bigger garage so i now have two um stations that i can use in my garage and that's doing really really well i'm really really pleased with it uh i do need to grab that one a minute and take it over here so that we've got some water put you on there and I want to start you up as well there we go right now it's actually going to start sending some material down through there we go they're already at one percent excellent okay that's working quite nicely um yeah so at the moment I'm working on a barn find car now don't get excited with the word barn find um this car really is quite appalling and I've stripped everything out of it and so in today's episode I was actually uh, rebuilding the vehicle. I don't actually know how it's going to go yet because um, I'm recording this one before the car mechanic simulator episode so that I'm going to go and record as soon as I finish doing this one. So um, to, at the moment for those of you who haven't seen it it's as much a mystery to you as it is to me. Um, that's most of what I do now at the moment. We've got two uh, time-lapse episodes every week and I know a lot of you really love the time-lapse. Not everybody does but enough of you do at the moment that I'm going to keep doing two episodes every week. And then when it does become less popular, I will... I'm not going to stop doing the time lapse because I quite enjoy doing it myself. But I will possibly at some point move to only one episode a week. Um, we'll have to... We'll see about it. I'll see uh, how it goes because one episode a week would free up more time for like looking at new stuff. So upcoming games, up upcoming titles that I've sort of been keeping an eye on. There's one called House Flip, and that might be of interest to you. I see that Dagoin has managed to procure himself some early access to the game. Lucky person. Um, I was not able to procure some early access to that game, which I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not uh, pleased about it because I really, really would have liked to have done. Um, but... That being said, when it does come out, I will be playing it. Um, it does look really, really good. It's still in beta at the moment, so there's a, it's not very polished. Um, there is a lot of room for improvement in the game, but it does look like it could be a lot of fun. You basically you buy a house, you do it up. Um, from what I've seen, it's a lot of um, placing furniture and painting, but there is some more serious stuff to do in the game as well, such as um, repairing some of the electrics and things like that. I think it's based in the US, which means that the electrics could be a little bit different to what I'm used to. I did begin training as an electrician, so I should be reasonably familiar with it. So I don't know how realistic they've made that particular aspect of the game. It'll be quite interesting to sort of see. But yeah, basically you have a house and you restore it, you repair it, you clean it and you make sure that it is nice and up to date and modernized and then you sell it again and it's just called house flipper it looks quite interesting um, so i'm quite looking forward to being able to play that one um and then another upcoming game this is coming out at beginning of next year is uh, police is it police simulator i think it's just police simulator and basically you're a cop and um in the state so you, you're sort of uh, running around and dealing with all kinds of different crimes um from bank robberies to uh, parking tickets so it, it looks like it could be quite an entertaining playthrough I don't know how much uh, long-term gameplay that one's got but again it's another one I'd like to take a look at so I don't know obviously all the games we're talking about today get into the comments section let me know your thoughts and your feelings on these different games uh, which ones would you like to see me play which ones do you think are just going to be absolutely awful you definitely don't want to see me play 
um, and so on and so forth. So we've also got, uh, what was another one? Oh yes, it was Tank Mechanic Simulator. Now, Car Mechanic Simulator, I've really, really been enjoying it. I've been, I've been having a lot of fun playing this game. Um, I know very, very little about repairing cars, as has become apparent to my audience in that game. I, I know nothing about repairing cars. I used to help my dad do it a bit um, with my cars, and eventually we came to a much more sensible decision where he would repair my car without my um, reluctant assistance, and I would repair his computer whenever that needed any work doing. And also I built him his new computer. So I did the stuff that I could do, and I enjoyed doing, and he absolutely detested, and he did the stuff that he could do, he enjoys doing, and I absolutely detested. So we ended up being a good arrangement of mutual benefit. Um, and so, yes, I can change a wheel on a car, but that's about it. That is literally about the full limit of my abilities when it comes to repairing cars of any kind. Um, and there are a few people who have been watching this series who are now familiar with my absolutely appalling abilities when it comes to doing anything to repairing a car. Um, and have been giving me all kinds of advice about different things that I can do, explaining various terms and stuff to me to try to help it make a little bit more sense. But the one great thing about the Car Mechanic Simulator is that even for someone like me that knows next to nothing about repairing vehicles, you can still learn. You, you can still learn. You can still do it. You can learn enough from that game to sort of uh, to, to be able to identify issues as they come into the workshop and work your way through them. It is a lot of fun. I really am enjoying doing that. So Tank Mechanic Simulator, um, yeah, basically you get some really old, rusty, worn out tanks and you strip them apart and you repair them from the ground up by the, by the look of it. It's not coming out for another month yet. I don't, I, I mean, I, it says December 2017. I don't know exactly when in December it would be, but it does look like it's going to be a huge amount of fun. Um, that game... It, I don't know why, but there's something really, really appealing about the idea of building... You, you literally, you go and get these tanks and you can build your own collection of tanks. And the idea of building my own collection of tanks in order to um, it just like literally populate my own museum of tanks... It's absolutely brilliant. I love this idea. I think it's absolutely fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to being able to play that one. Um, I would say of all the games that are coming up still that I haven't played yet, um, that one appeals to me the most. Um, there's just something about it. I mean, ideally, what I'd like to see is Tractor Mechanic Simulator. I would like to be able to repair either tractors or construction equipment. If I could go and get one really old, battered, worn-out excavator, um, stick it in a workshop and repair it from the ground up, that would be very cool. That would be so much fun. Um, so yes, that is one option that I could do. Just bring that one in there like that. Um, that's, that is one that I could do, um, if it's ever made, is like construction equipment me mechanic. And I really hope that it is, because I mean, if they got tank mechanic simulator, and I believe that there is also a train mechanic simulator, and they got car mechanic simulator, they're bound to be able to bring in construction machinery and or tractor restorer dot, you know, simulator or something like that. So you get an old, uh, worn out tractor, you bring that into your workshop and you repair that one from the ground up. Um, when those games do get here, I'm sure they will eventually, I am so definitely going to play them. So, I've been talking a lot about loads of different games that are coming up um, in the near future. Uh, hang on, let me, oh, I want to put the handbrake on. There, is that thing close enough? I don't think it is, I think I just want to back up just a little bit so that I'm a tiny bit closer, It'd be better. Um, what are your thoughts? What... What are you sort of looking forward to seeing me play? What um, are there any of these games I've talked about that you think sound absolutely terrible? And what would you like to see me do in the future? Because I'm, you know, obviously I can't just stay playing the games that I'm playing at the moment. I need to be able to play all kinds of games. So I want to. I'm trying to get an idea of the different ones that you'd like to see me do. Um, now I have always said that I'm not going to start doing um, first-person shooters like uh, the Battlegrounds one and um, uh, oh what is it uh, Call of Duty Call of Duty I'm not going to do those I'm really really bad at um, first-person shooter games now 
I have been told that, you know, my motto that I was saying about last week, where um, sometimes your best, you know, people talk about doing their best. So sometimes your best is not good enough, and sometimes you have to do what is required of you. Um, You know, basically, go and try again. Work harder and improve that whatever your best is, you can do better. It's essentially what I is what I sort of read into that one. Um, so yeah, I have been had some people suggest that I should uh, you know put my motto into practice and you know become better at first person shooter games. And yes, I suppose I could, but the fact of the matter is, I really don't like playing first person shooter games either. So um, yeah, for that reason, I'm choosing not to put my motto into practice with first person shooter games, and we're just going to leave them where they are. Um, so yes, I won't be playing things like Call of Duty and games like that. So if there are anything in particular that you really like to see me play, um, suggest it in the comment section. There's one, there's a couple of um, sort of simulator type games, which are science fiction type games that people have been suggesting to me. Um, they're online multiplayer and they do require a huge investment of time. Um, it doesn't work very well for me to do games that require a massive investment of time because I've either got to put that massive investment of time into videos and generally those sorts of games require a lot of grinding in order to get to um, like new advances and that. People don't want to watch you grind on videos, right? You, you literally, you're doing the same thing for hours and hours and hours and it doesn't make for very entertaining viewing. Um, and I don't have time to spend hours and hours and hours doing a whole load of grind uh, behind the scenes. And if I was only doing like one or two games, then yes, I would have time to do that. But uh, because I've chosen to sort of take the approach where I'm covering a lot of different games and doing as many different games as I can so that you get all different types of gameplay on here. So there's basically... Um, it's not something for everyone, but there's a lot of content for people who enjoy kind of mostly simulator style gaming and similar things. Um, mostly it's similar things. I mean, if you exclude the World of Warcraft playthrough, um, I would say that it's similar. Stardew Valley is technically still in the farming simulator type bracket because you do grow plants and stuff like that. I mean, yes, there there are some other aspects of gameplay in Stardew Valley that is quite a little bit different to uh, any other simulator game that I play. Um, but I think there's enough in there to give it almost simulator... Um, I would say almost simulator status. I would say that game is almost simulator. Um, and I've looked on quite a lot of different websites and articles and so on about upcoming simulator games and current simulator titles. It, you know, while I'm trawling around trying to find anything that um, I think that you might really enjoy me play. And a lot of them do mention Stardew Valley as a um, simulator type game. So I think that we can include that one in there. So... If that is the case, if we can include that one in there, I would say really the only one that's definitely not anything like a simulator would be World of Warcraft because um, Factorio, again, it's, it's not strictly simulator, but it's, um, it's close enough. It's a real-time strategy that has got a lot of simulator-type elements in it, I think. Um, we're building all of your factories and managing everything. So again, I would, I would class that one kind of in a simulator genre. It's difficult, actually. It's definitely a real-time strategy, um, uh, but beyond that, it's, it is kind of difficult to really put that one into a bracket. Um, outside of, you know, real-time strategy, it's kind of, it's a fairly unique game. I don't know very many others that are like it. I know others that are um, much smaller factory games, where you're literally you're just in a factory, you, but you don't have the kind of the option that you do with Factorio to build massive sprawling bases that spread for miles and miles with trains and um, conveyor belts and robots and so on, connecting everything together. It's, it's, it's quite a unique type of game, a unique approach, and I think it's done, it, it's, it works really well. It's, it's so well balanced. Um, anyway, we've got another great big hole here. I'm going to dig another load out of here. And this will be our final load today, and then we're going to call it, um, we'll call it a day, I think. Uh, so let me just, got quite got a full bucket full in this one. Um, 
pull down in. So yeah, I'm deliberately digging another hole right here. I'm just digging right down and making a hole. Um, or I'm trying to. At the moment, I'm just making an absolute pig's ear of this. There we go. Finally got something up. Right. Pick that one up there. And then tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the bulldozer back in. And we're going to... Actually, we might just dig another little bit in the middle there. I'm not... I don't know quite sure yet um bringing the bulldozer back in now that we've removed all of this extra material should make um it should make it a little bit easier to like continue building our road because i do want to take it down to a set level here i want to um like try to take it down to the same level as the area that we've got flattened off right inside hang on let me just dig up another bucket full here yeah over there next to where the bulldozer is we've got that area that we leveled off there i'd kind of like to go in a level line from there all the way out over to the edge of the cutting over there or the the edge of the claim over there if we can have that all on exactly the same level just flat all the way i think that'd be really really good but i mean if we can't if we've got to just have it raised slightly in the middle here we can still make it so that the um the bulk of the road is down and we, we, we can have just like a, a slight incline as we come up through now kind of digging up all the work that i did in last week's episode i'm now sort of digging great big holes in it so it's kind of making it pointless but i do think that we were quite successful last week in um like extending the road out and um making it work quite well as it was so in tomorrow's episode i'm going to get back into that bulldozer and i'm going to try and level it off roughly where we've got all of this area here Oop. what am i doing there there we go that's a bit better bring that back into the middle and i can push some of the material from the side that the bulldozer is on towards us over here uh, but i'm not going to push very much of it i'm going to try and just do a little bit Actually, it's going to be quite interesting because I've got these two big holes in. I'm going to actually, I've got to try to fill those two holes as I work my way through. So it might be better if we can get the bulldozer out of there and start from this side and working our way back in towards the middle. Um, and then we could be left with like a, a big hump in the middle that we're, that's the, like the last bit that we dig up. And then we leave the excavator right here. So we're using the bulldozer to push material back this way. And then, and if there's still excess, we can use this excavator to get rid of it. That might actually work quite well. We'll have to see. We'll see how that goes in our next episode. It's going to be mostly the bulldozer in the next one. Um, and I did have a suggestion, actually, that I should try to do in like the, the, fi the second half of the final episode each week. That's when I should have my wash. I should uh, run everything that we've gotten through the wavetable and the magnetite separator and so on, um, just to see how much gold we get right at the end of it. I mean, at the moment, uh, money really isn't an issue. We, we've got no problem with money whatsoever. So we're on 56 ounces of gold. Um, so we could actually do that. I think that might not be that might be a pretty good idea. Actually, we got we're currently on 56 ounces. So we can, it doesn't matter if we don't go and smelt the material that we're going to um, get. We can just keep the material that we've got. Now let me just switch over to driving. Oop, handbrake, there we go. I'm going to pull back from the edge so that I'm in the right place for the bulldozer. And I'm going to bring that one out round like that. There. And drop it down like that. There we go. Turn the lights off. Switch the engine off. Yeah. So it doesn't actually matter if we don't smelt the gold and um, sell it all in that episode, but we could have a, like a, a weekly cleanup so that we get we can see how much gold we've managed to get for the week, depending on what different style of gameplay that we've taken for that particular week. So we're not going to get a huge amount this week because of only having the. Um, no, we're going to spend most of tomorrow just sort of playing around with the bulldozer again, so we're not going to be getting a huge amount. But I do quite like this idea. So we just store everything up in buckets and put that near the wavetable and the magnetite separator. And then at the end of the week, um, for the second half of the last episode, we can clear everything out, um, clean all of the buckets and see what we end up with after everything that we've done. So I like that idea and I will... We'll see how it works out. I'm going to try to sort of implement it, but obviously there's no guarantee that it's going to work. And we'll see how we can progress with things. So let me just lower this one down. I'm going to run this vehicle back over on top of the claim over here, just so that it's there and ready. I'm not going to... Actually, no, I'll tell you what. I was just thinking. 
If we, if I bring this one down here and have it close enough to this small excavator, as long as I don't drive into that hole right there, uh, we could try and load some of those tailings into it in, well, maybe next episode, maybe the episode after, I'm not quite sure. But if I drop that one right about there, like that, can turn those lights off. And I'll park it there. That's where I'm going to leave it so that we, it's kind of in the right place for um, doing those tailings as and when we want to. And then we can always just tip one load of that right here. I don't know how much of it we're going to need now, though. Depends how the bulldozer works next uh, in next episode. So if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. Let's just go and check over here. How much have we got? Leap down through this way, and we have 17 and 12%, and we're up to almost 50% in the mat. So we're doing pretty well, I think. That was four loads in there. Still a little bit more coming through on the conveyors and so on. So I think we're, we're going to be just under 50%. So another four loads should fill those mats right up, and that will be our first lot done. But anyway, until next time. Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.